I need to say something. And what I need to say, I'm not quite sure how to say it. I'm also acutely aware of how you might take it and what sort of barriers there are for you really hearing this message. I'd originally considered writing these thoughts down in a letter and sending them to you. And when I say you, I mean my dear close friend. But then as I thought about it more, I realized I could have said these things to everyone in my life. And I really should have said these things to everyone in my life. And that just points out a first difference to me. The difference between talking to a close friend, to someone I trust, to someone I care deeply about, and talking to someone else. Now the people who don't fall into that category fall along a wide spectrum, a continuum. There's all sorts of complexities to the relationships that I have with the people in my life. And that is the first thing that I want to point out, that I discriminate, I judge people. I have a different amount of trust to the different people in my life. And I see that as a shortcoming, because I want to be equal in the trust that I have for the people around me. And I want to be abundant with the honesty that I speak with. What I want to say is not often said. It's not even often that it's thought about for some people. Often when it is stumbled upon, stumbled upon too late. It's an insight that is forced upon us. And we're left wishing that we'd known it sooner. We're left wishing that we had have acted differently. And there is a pain to regret. There is a pain to facing up to one's shortcomings. There is a frustration in knowing that I could have acted differently. So you can take what I'm trying to say here as my attempt to save myself from future regrets. This is my attempt to anticipate something that I wish I had have done. Life has its ins and outs. It has its situations. And human interaction is always complex. And it is such that it's not very often where saying certain things is appropriate. So what I'd like to do now is create a space or have a moment to honor those things which rarely get said. I'd like to say the things that we really need to say. But perhaps there's a reason we don't always say them. Maybe it's just too heavy. It's too emotional. It's too much to take on. After all, day-to-day -day living is just day-to-day -day living. But what if we could acknowledge these things and have them as a background assumption to our day-to-day -day living? What if we could feel certain insights and certain connections with each other without having to say them? What I need to say, I'm aware you might be closed to the idea of. It's an idea that can come with lots of misinterpretations. It's something that is often shrouded in confusion. And it's sensitive. And it's something that is often swept under the rug, made fun of. And even now, I get the feeling that this whole act of speaking in a serious manner, of making myself vulnerable, of trying to prep up this thing that I need to share with you, it's all so serious, isn't it? Can't we just lighten up a bit? Why do things have to be so heavy? But I also feel at times that that very logic is a defense. It's a fear of feeling the heavy. It's a defense against the profound. And what I need to say is a step towards the profound. What I need for you to hear from me is going to take weight on your shoulders. It's going to take lifting. It's going to take strength for you to hear it and for you to really know what it means. What I need to say is that I love you and I care deeply for you. And this is my plea for kindness. 
for being a little bit more understanding. And make no mistake about it. I know I'm a terrible lover. I don't know how to show love or be loving. I don't know what that means. Or rather, that I wish I could have loved you. There are a lot of complicated factors that seem to need to be in place in order for love to flower. I have to have the ability to do it. You have to be open to receive it. We need to be in a situation in which that's appropriate. We need to have other factors in our environment aligned in such a way as that we can act in a certain way. We both even need to have at least some sort of idea of what it means to act in a loving way. So I don't know, really, if saying that I love you is the right way of going about expressing what I want to say. I don't even know what it means to be kind. I don't know what it means to be helpful. I don't know what it means to be respectful. But just by acknowledging these things, and just by putting these out as an assumption of how you and I relate to each other, makes me feel like I'm off in a new direction. I'm off in a better direction. I'm sure there are some people who can go in that direction without having to say it explicitly. It doesn't seem right to tell someone that you love them. It doesn't seem right to talk about love at all. Why talk about love? Why not just be loving? If you really loved someone, they would know it by how you speak to them, how you act around them, and how you feel when you're in each other's presence. Or at least that's what I say to myself as a reason to not speak these words. I love you. There is also things in my mind which stop me from venturing down the path of love, such as noticing that the human experience seems to be a lot more complex and dynamic than just what we would normally call love. Typically the things that come to mind when we speak about love is an intimate relationship, beautiful emotions, fluffy feelings, soppy words, romantic gestures. These are all good fun, and I don't mean to downplay that aspect of the human condition. But there's so much more that life has to offer, like passion, intensity, variety of experience, flavors of emotions, variety of situations. And if we're talking about love as just one human emotion, then I would say it is not appropriate to always just be that one thing. But instead of downplaying love, instead of only working with that cliché definition, that simple Hollywood idea of what comes to mind when we hear the word love, rather I'd like us to expand the meaning of love. I'd like love to be a guiding principle which can include all human experience. On a few quiet moments, I've considered how many people have been in my life. There are different circles which have their own differences. And if I really think it through, it's baffling to me. If I really get into the details and ponder the vastness of the people in my life, really does leave me gobsmacked. And you can do the same. You can think about this. First of all, we have family. For some people, even extended family is hard to keep track of. But your immediate family has always been there. And you have close friends. Friends that have been with you through thick and thin. Rarely. I find someone who's had a friend for their entire life. Do you have a friend that you've known since high school? Do you have a friend that you've known since primary school? Do you have a friend that you've known since daycare? And would you really still consider that person to be one of your closest friends? Then you have current acquaintances, 
the people who you still run into on a regular basis because of the city that you're living in, or where you're working, or whatever you're doing with life at the moment. Then you have old acquaintances, or old friends, whom you would remember if you ran into them again. However unlikely it would be that you would run into them again. But beyond old acquaintances, there are people that you have completely forgotten about. People you might recognize the face of if you saw them again, but you wouldn't remember the name of. But there's another category. There's a category beyond that, which is the people that you interacted with, which you have never even thought about or remembered at all. It's staggering to think just how many people you've interacted with in your life. And it's staggering to think just how many more you probably will interact with. And if you can see this pattern of relationships changing, of memories fading, of social circles blurring into the past, then you can see that it's most likely going to happen with the people who are around you right now. There will come a time when you last see the person you are friends with right now. Sometimes farewells are things that we see coming. Sometimes a new chapter in life comes along and we plan for it. We know what's coming up and we have our farewells and we get to say a fond goodbye. Other times changes come along suddenly. Other times changes are unexpected. Sometimes even death takes us unexpectedly. I have been fortunate in my life to have only known a few people who have died. But this is a fact of life, and I can see that it is going to be a fact of life more and more as I get older. And when it comes to death and our last opportunities to relate to each other in a meaningful way and in a loving way, well, death is the most obvious teacher of all. Death is the most ruthless teacher, and in some ways the most effective teacher in forcing us, in pushing us along the path towards meaningful relationships. But if we can acknowledge that, we can anticipate it. How different our relationships would be if we could acknowledge the fact that everyone we know is going to die. At some point, we're all going to die. And I don't mean to say that to someone. We don't need to bring that up in our daily conversations. But rather, maybe this insight is something a bit more like love. Maybe it's connected to love, in that we should have it as a background insight. Something in the back of our minds. Something that we should remember every now and then. Something that would make us a little bit less frustrated with each other. A little slower to anger. A little less greedy. A little less willing to be manipulative or controlling of each other. Or a little bit more honest. A little bit more vulnerable. And acknowledging death can just be something that helps flavor the pot. Perhaps it's a sprinkle of a spice through a stew. Most often in life, it's not that we come to an end of a chapter, and we know it's the end of a chapter. And it's not even that we have a sudden change, such as a death in the family or in the social circle. What actually happens most often in life is that change is gradual. Most often in life, there is no defining moment. There is no chapter or page reference. Most often, things are changing slowly. Things are changing incrementally. And these small changes stacked onto one another can create this illusion that things are quite stable. Things are exactly how they should be, how they will be, and how they always have been. It takes effort to actually see the difference between where you are now and where you have been. There are so many moments to choose from. There are so many different ways of comparing that it's often overwhelming 
when we embark on this endeavor of self-reflection. But it really doesn't take much to at least acknowledge that things are changing. And things will not always be how they are now. It's a Buddhist principle, I think, that the world is impermanent. But that insight seems so grandiose and so far off that it's hard to know exactly what that means for our day-to-day -day lives. What does that mean for love? What does that mean for acknowledging death? I by no means have the answers. I wouldn't know the first thing about love. But at least now I've acknowledged it. At least now I've said this to you, and you've heard it. And I think the word love is so shrouded in mischief that it seems sometimes both easy to be profound with it, but also quite easy to be cheesy with it. So I'd like to downplay this word love and say that this is my plea for kindness. If love is for Jesus and the Buddha and those sorts of figures, then us mere mortals can just work on kindness. Can't we be just a little more kind to one another? It really should be that simple, and it should be easy enough to remember that. So this is my plea for kindness, not from you, but from me. This is my plea for me to remember that I need to be kind to you. And with that comes the acknowledgement that we won't be here forever, and we will have shortcomings. We will fail to be vulnerable and be honest with each other. We'll fail to recognize how things are changing. And even when that moment comes, when it's the last time that I'll ever see you, maybe even then will not be the right time for me to express my gratitude and how happy I am to having known you. So let me just say that this is my plea for kindness. That's all I have to say.